Well, good morning, everybody. So I brought the old Cummins into the shop to do a little service and tune-up. Just, you know, regular shit. Change oil and fuel filters. Clean up the battery terminals a little bit. They're getting a little bit corroded again. So we got those all cleaned up. I noticed when I pulled the dipstick that, hey, this thing is kind of low on oil. Well, shit, let's check that out. Yeah, right there, okay? That's the seam in the vacuum pump, okay? Right above that oil feed line, there's that seam. And that's where she's leaking. Uh, man, we've had, you know, we got all the... I think it's dripping on me. We got all the leaks fixed up top behind the injection pump. The uh, lifter galley. Now I painted mine red, not just because I like international, because, hey, there's a bolt loose too right there. I'll be dang. Anyway, not just because I like red, but because now it's, uh, other than black, I can see shit a lot easier in there. And you wouldn't necessarily have to use green or red, but you could use any color, green or orange or purple or pink, whatever color you wanted. But so I can see the... The lifter galley in there real easy now that she's painted a, a different color than black. Anyway, so she's been pretty well kind of leak free most of the summer since we did all that patching. And well shit, now we've got oil all over the underneath side of the truck again. And of course it's used, I don't know, probably two or three quarts between oil changes. Well that's not a terrible lot, but it's not got enough to get you nervous. So anyway. We've got a leak. So what do you do? Do you go buy uh, a new vacuum pump? I mean, yeah, you could. Kind of be silly though. I mean, it's like, I don't know, throwing out your engine because you got a front seal leak. There's a seal in that vacuum pump and they're not terribly hard to replace. You just gotta know where to find them. Well, I just happen to have one right in stock. Look at this guy. It's been sitting on my shelf for a while. There's the doorman part number. And there's your seals. This is kind of an odd, odd uh, dimension seal, this uh, bigger one here, and the others are just O-rings. So anyway, we've got to get that thing out of there. Obviously, uh, get that thing out of the way. Uh, we've got to take our intake pipe off. Then we got to get down in there and take the power steering pump off. And then we can pull the vacuum pump out. So, now they got the shop full of smoke from a stupid truck starting. It's cold, it's been in here all night. Changed the oil in last night. So, uh, yeah. Let's get that thing out of there and uh, I'll show you guys how to rebuild it. And there's the intake pipe. Now, the power steering pump. It's uh, kind of a pain to get off, but not a deal breaker. You've just got four studs, essentially, and usually the stud will come out. This one didn't, so I put another nut on it to get it to come out because it's a lot easier to clear this if that stud is out because you can rotate the pump down just a little bit and slide her on back. Um, so now I've just got a, uh, well you saw the oil feed line which is right down there. Come on light, right there, that's the oil feed line coming up underneath. And then there's a bolt here and a bolt on the opposite side on the bottom. And then that whole piece will come out. And right there is my little, my bolt inside there. Man, you can't hardly see in there. There it is, right there, that little bolt. 
she had worked her way out against the inside of the power steering pump and I had taken all the studs loose from the pump and wiggled it and I'll be damned it wouldn't come out like, oh shit I forgot that bolt that's a allen head cap screw so that it almost rides flush I don't know if a, a regular hex head would work but uh, I had to use some really long needle nose to get that thing cranked in and I could only wiggle just a little bit it took me like 20 minutes to get it rotated in far enough I could slide the pump back out of the way anyway so we'll have to get that tightened up um, if you guys have your stock um, oil sensor oil pressure gauge it's going to be right in there okay and when you slide this guy back be certain you don't snap that thing off because it's pretty lengthy you know you got the let me zoom out here uh, you got the the threaded part and then the big uh, bolt behind it let's see if I got one hold on yeah I don't think I have one anyway that sensor is going to be stabbed into the block somewhere right in here and if you're real rammy and jammy you'll break that sensor off when you either pull the pump or pull the vacuum pump and that's a that's a major no deal no good so be very careful don't break that sensor off it's, it's going to be sticking out you know like three inches and it's a kind of a bugger to work around mine doesn't have that because i've just got a manual oil pressure gauge and it's plumbed in i believe it's right there should be right there can't see it from here but anyway um yeah so we just got to pull these uh these last two bolts these are going to be well they're 18 millimeter on mine i think they're probably 15 millimeter normally uh stock bolts mine are not uh original so anyway that's that we'll get her out of there here all right there it is i just ran it through the parts washer for a minute cleaned her all up so I can keep my hands a little cleaner and just pull these two bolts out right here one on each side that guy out I'll do this one hand it's kind of fun Put that guy out now it just wiggles apart. Look in there. See anything? There we go. Now, nice and careful like. You'll see the whole thing here in just a second. Okay. That is our vacuum pump. See the veins in there? And that's, uh, yeah, pretty normal looking in there. Make sure you keep these veins down in their slots. This one, because I pulled it apart, it was kind of up at an angle. You know, kind of not sitting right. So make sure you keep them down in there where they're supposed to be when you go put her back together. Flip this guy up here. All right, here's our a problem this little o-ring and it's uh kind of flat i mean it's squished it's supposed to be that's how they work o-rings flatten out when you press them together but uh, anyway it's old and crappy and no bueno no good so the other end we've got an actual seal and it just pops out and it's a, like I said it's a goofy it's a weird I mean you can't just go to the store and say hey I, I want this o-ring because it's it's a weird one they can get them if you want adjust this this seal but uh, it, like I said uh, they'll have to uh, special order it if you just order the whole kit you know it comes in there so that's the way I do her so uh, we're going to get that open there, get her new O-ring in place, and get her new seal in place. And I'll have to look for that uh, thicker one. I don't remember where it goes just right offhand. But anyway, this one here is our problem. She's leaking right at the seam. 
and I'll make sure we get all the gunk out of the channel clean her up a little bit I'm not too concerned about cleaning up the inside as far as getting the oil out of it and such because it's it's gonna be right back in the oil anyway uh, so we'll just kind of go from there all right I did a little digging the other um, o-ring over here this middle one she goes down inside here around this collar and it wasn't leaking but I've got it apart so I'm gonna replace it anyway this collar is what holds in your drive coupler and seals around this way it just drops in there like that but obviously make sure you have the drive coupler in there so we'll get that o-ring off there quick and Man, just like that, we're ready to go back together almost. Okay, we got those two. Got that drove back in there. Got our new ring in here. Now with this little alignment dowel, it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. It only goes one way. Um, the drive coupler down in there attaches to that, and it's not real super difficult to do. You just kind of lay her down in there and line her up. Um, not major and it's uh, it's all loosey-goosey at the moment anyway so you can freely turn it just got to get her set back down in there and line up our little dowel okay now that's all together got her snugged up good and the last thing is this seal make sure you put it in the right way she goes in this way okay a lot of times you'll see uh, a lot of trucks, they'll, they'll pretty typically be leaking engine oil right out of this seal. If that's the only thing leaking, you know, you can certainly just replace that seal. But you still got to pull the whole thing out anyway because you can't really do that in the truck. It's kind of a major pain. So I just prefer to do the whole thing while I got it all out. And then I can clean it up and do whatever I need to to it as well. So I just need to grab a uh, seal driver real quick and just... Uh, Set that guy in there. Ta-da! There it is. It doesn't go in very far. There's a little metal lip in there. She can't go any farther than that. Okay, now we're ready to throw her back in the truck. But before we do, that oil feed line, not too long ago, uh, had a leak issue right on that guy. Okay, and if you look in there, that's a T fitting coming out the side of the block. That T fitting where she screws onto the block was loose. So it was literally just coming right down the side of the line and it made it look like the line was leaking. But it wasn't the line. It was that nut right there. She's just a little bit loose. And that is one heck of a tight spot trying to fit a wrench up in there. And I could just barely get the wrench to move. So before we go stuffing that full of parts again, we're going to go ahead and make sure that T fitting is good and tight. And then, of course, we're going to tighten up that loose screw right there. And there it is back installed. So, got everything fixed up as far as the oil line and uh, the two. They're actually star bolts, them ones that were loose. The one above it was also loose. It just hadn't worked out yet. So, everything's buttoned back up there. Now, we just have to get that coupler inside the drive inside that coupler piece that's down inside this here. Um, it can be kind of tricky because it... Uh, the coupler will not rotate now that she's buttoned back up to the front gear case but the uh, drive there on the power steering pump will rotate a little bit so you just have to kind of you know stuff her up in there and kind of hope you get it straight and if it's not then maybe you can rotate it a little bit and get it in otherwise yeah you back it out and and uh, turn that drive on the front of that uh, power steering pump um, hopefully you got it um, kind of timed at least when you put it in you kind of looked where it was and you can kind of you know get it pretty close before you have to pull it back out again so 
yeah we're just gonna go ahead and throw that back up in there hope i only have to do it once <laughs> and mine actually went on the first try so all right now i just got to throw in the rest of my uh, studs here and button her up we're pretty much done with this project other than hook up the intake pipe and you know a few little wires and whatnot that's gotten in the way there it is all back together now we just gotta start it up and run it see if our oil leak is fixed or if i boogered it up somehow all right well i hope that helped you guys out and enjoyed the video until my next video guys thanks for watching catch you later